are growing up. The demon lives under the bed, but is gone come morning. Then late afternoon rises again, this time whilst walking home from school in a planet filled with strange people. The demon will not die, not even a mother can kill it. Now or a father, the demon sits in class at the old desk with inkwell from another era. Terror is alive in the eyes of shop windows and waves at the beach, the hot sand and the tin man looking at a corner, two men under the pier at Ocean Park lying, their bodies glued, or down the aisle at the huge department store downtown where endless pinging sounds dot the mind and monumental angels stand erect by furniture displays. Oh, fellow children, do not laugh at the noise of cats and dogs, of electric train sets, spooking the house, of dirty rats in class, of tetherball and softball and empty space. Not everyone stands in a rule of letters on a page so plain and clear, nor takes to numbers on a page. Little time, little time, a nursery rhyme to satisfy the future in an unidentifiable manner. The bees in a hive out by the pea field and the pond filled with secrets and granny crying for her son and the sun crying in the night's dust. A mumbling man in bed dies in a Catholic hospital. Jesus is a white rose over his prone body. We wander in and out. He holds an arm into the air, his unused violin weeping in the garage. Then the matriarchs hide they hide in the snow like when they were kids. My cousin is three. He dies at 66, all grown, it seems. One likes to believe that death will pass by. It is part of growing. It is a down going. The weeds, all those weeks, and the funny boat that sailed for a month in Santa Monica Harbor and sat in the backyard for a year until a man came to tow it away for scrap. Back in the early 50s, there was a big move in all along the California coast, in Oregon and Washington. Guys who came back from the war to go out fishing. So my father and a friend got this, that's what it's about, they got this boat called the Smarlin. Just, it was, my father was Sam, and the other guy was Arlen, and then there's Marlin fishing. So they lasted a month. They were out by San Clemente Island, and my father, who's a real pagan, uh, you know, they got in a bombing range, and uh, they, was, they were fired on by the U.S. Navy. And Arlen, who was very religious, got down and started praying, and my father said, I just got to get the fuck out of here. And so that ended the business. <laughs> so I'm going to read... Uh, Two more. These, these are all, most of these are very, very new. And uh, unfortunately, there is all this indwelling cousin in memory of Jerry Weitzman. So this is a cousin who died, who I referred to in the last poem. Once home from Vietnam, Jerry was the same straightforward, easygoing magician in silence. Staying there in San Bernardino, as the groves withered and the mastodons fell over their steering wheels, the banks could not save them. Then Jerry was always there, always in my trip, popping up through the journey, staying one night at the Theosophy House, <clears throat> home from the war, telling me of the prostitutes and rebuilding a bridge in Saigon. Jerry was subdued, a bit erratic, sweet by nature, forever in sight of a deep love unannounced. He took it as natural. He saw the tearing down of the trees. He met my lovers one by one, thinking it only natural. And he smoked many packs of cigarettes down decades and dared a wide comedy and truth. He would uncover our past, finding names buried in Belarus, 
We came from Odessa. We were in Halifax. We owned a furniture store in the barrio, a surplus store. With my cousin, I play in the storeroom of the last, jumping onto foam rubber and piles of army jackets from the Second World War. And we would be laughing and we'd be owning our youth and feeling it as something that would not pass. The last poem. Last poem is a song for Walt Whitman. I, I read it, I was invited to read at the uh, Walt Whitman birthplace in Long Island, and it's quite a place because it was a private home till the 1950s, and then the people who had the home gave it to the state of New York and it's a monument, and so it's, it's really the way it was. The three fireplaces, the big kitchen, uh, the servant's room. It's not a big place, but you know, those days even poor people had the servants. And Whitman describes this house in specimen days, the very beginning, in detail, and, and you could use that to go into the house today. So that was a real high point. Song for Walt Whitman. Yeah, I get it now, Walt. The handsome snake is in the grass and the obscure boundaries stretch from point A to point B. But the thing is, they mean nothing in the long rush of things. And can you believe this? How the ozone tears a little at a time? It's so idiotic, man, and we think we don't need those words anymore that come out of the wet soil or from the bottom of a dry arroyo. We need the fallen leaves and the trunks of massive trees lining the streets or congregating in a forest. I'd say Sequoia would do. Man, I love the fallen light of your memory, the gift of simple things we cannot wholly deconstruct, the butterfly on your nose. Yes, it's so funny you'd think it had been planned. Walt, I was invited to your birthplace I came from way out west, just so damn guilty of all kinds of things, and so hungry and thirsty, you'd think I had planned it. It's just natural. And so in love with my love am I, as if he was someone who accidentally came into my hands, though love is only some of it. And they set me on a stage after a tour of your bedroom and the kitchen where your mother baked bread and churned butter in the early 19th century, which now seems such a mass of humanity marching in dreaded formation down the path. Your brother in the trenches, the dead at Gettysburg, all gone outward, another brother unable to care for himself. Yeah, Walt, you saw, and now we dream. The corpse is rotting, old man. The death grip is on us, and we will be aware. Man, I had Mexican food before we crossed the street, me and my pals, and the ladies met us under a statue where you appear so American, sublime. We heard your father chopping wood. We saw the ragged eagle on your head. You saw and you told that face you gave down in the muck and in a rain shower, our feet sloshing. We'd line up all the butchers in our dreams for keeps and keep the wheels turning. Man, these times are hard time. Sweet old moneyless wordmonger moping round where time will not be resisted. We cannot help it how he prays the rocking cradle and the laughter of a baby in the woods. It's a miracle. A drop of rain out of a gaping hole in the sky. And when the bow breaks, we begin sprinting. That's what they say. That's how it breaks down. I got on stage and read in the spanking new auditorium. And then giggled secretly when I heard your footsteps in the clouds. People wanted to know, where's Walt Whitman going? Do you have a timetable? But that's okay. Later on a train back to Brooklyn, I read your Civil War letters. Time is bruised. The nations never stop watching warily. That train rattled and belched. It struck into my head. Dreams pass through a crowded emptiness. The earth, restive, prophecies, 
rising out of shadowed brick and steel and glass, from train to subway, then back home, sitting in an aisle seat on jet blue, screaming your epic in my subterranean heart, you sluggard, you clown, you lonesome genius of the map, essential brother. It's all going now, but we try to keep the wheel spinning, man. We dance, yeah, we got it, and we won't let go. Thank you.